makes the buns in the kitchen. Is she available? Because I'm getting signals. You said we should go get some drinks and meet your company? Yeah, come on. It'll be fun. Ah, good. We're not drinking alone. How you doing, creme de la creme? Your worship. I'm so glad he has someone new to hit with that joke. Do you prefer creme or cremisius? Creme's faster. The chief's nicknames usually end up sticking. Hey, when I was growing up, my name was just this series of numbers. We all give each other nicknames under the cune. They ever wear shirts under the cune, chief? Or do they just run around binding their breasts like that? It's a harness, Krem. Yes, for your pillowy man bosoms. Let me know if you need help binding. You could really chisel something out of that overstuffed look. Did you always know? Yes. It's not the most fortunate thing to know about yourself growing up in Tevinter, one rung above slavery. In Kunadar, Krem would be an Akunatlak. That's what we call someone born one gender but living like another. And Kunari don't treat those Akun people any differently than a real man. They are real men, just like you are. Maybe your people aren't so bad after all. Don't get your hopes up, Krem. We still come down hard on the back talk. <laughs> anyway, here's the rest of the charges, or what's left of the rest. A lot of them went looking for stronger drinks. We've got Rocky and Skinner there, and over there are Stitches, Dalish, <laughs> and Grim. Crazy bunch of assholes, but they're mine. Were you born on the surface, or are you from Orzammar? Orzammar. I got exiled. Stupid noble crap. Also, I accidentally blew up a bit of the shape rate. Rocky's one of our best sappers. He can take down enemy fortifications faster than a golem. I'm also working on my own version of Kunari Black Powder. I've almost got it. Yeah, you really don't. Why aren't you with your clan? Our keeper thought I should see the world a little. Dalish don't have Templars, so they can't have too many mages in a clan at once. Now, sir, you know I'm not a mage. That'd make me an apostate. You carry a staff, Dalish. It's a bow. A bow with a giant glowing crystal at the tip. Yes, it's for aiming. Old elven trick you wouldn't understand. I take it you're the company healer? Yes, first time I ever picked up a sword was when the blight hit Ferelden. Never put it back down. He makes a potion that'll put you right back on your feet after even the toughest fight. It tastes terrible, though. That's because it's a poultice, sir. You're not supposed to drink it. So, how'd you join the Chargers? Killed some people. Skinner didn't take kindly to nobles testing their new swords on the elves in her alienage. Bull took me in. Now I get paid to kill Shams. This is actually really good behavior for her. She's not marking her territory or anything. Grim, is it? Hmm. <clears throat> Grim doesn't talk much. I'm pretty sure he's the lost king of some small country, or a chieftain, something like that. Hmm. You've got a good company, Bull. Ah, we do all right. No man can beat the Chargers, cause we'll hit you where it hurts. Unless you know a tavern with loose hearts and looser skirts. For every bloody battlefield will gladly raise a cup. No matter what tomorrow holds, our horn be pointing up. <laughs> Thanks for coming by, boss. Glad you could meet some of my team. And what else did Lady Forsythia say? That she'd rather drown herself than help the Inquisition. Anything else? She said she'd have us flogged alive if we allied with her brother. That does sound like her. Cheer up, Josie. We at least have our attention. You always do find the brighter side of things. We are in the midst of cementing an alliance with Lady Forsythia of Nevara, your worship. It's become a somewhat delicate task. 
Can I do anything to help negotiations? Uh, thank you, but I believe I have matters in hand. I dissuaded her from sending soldiers when she learned we'd struck an accord with a brother she's feuding with. Lady Porcythia simply employs a colorful manner of speech. Dealing with so many demanding, strong-willed people can't be easy. It's no less intense than my days at court, Inquisitor, I assure you. But I confess I do miss my staff from the Embassy in Antifa. It was always useful to discuss the day's visitors with them. I have time, if you'd like to review things with me. I wouldn't wish to impose. If it were imposing, I wouldn't have offered. Well, I admit, there are a few potential alliances it would be good to discuss. Right on the parlor floor. In front of everyone at the soiree. Who does such a thing in front of their guests? The Duke of Kellington, apparently. And then there's cold lurking. It frightens our guests half to death. Lord Jinnar still won't respond to our letters. And Sarah, can she not find a single overshirt with that mustard taint on it? Then there's Dorian. The man refuses to take anything seriously unless it suits his whim. Not to mention... Oh, oh goodness. Have we been here an hour already? It went by so quickly, I didn't even notice. You're far too polite. I didn't intend to go on for so long. You must think me quite the gossip. You've been working continually since I met you, Josephine. And that can't stop. I must be going. But I leave feeling less troubled than I have in weeks. Inquisitor, I wonder if you might help me with a delicate situation. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivian. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Heralds. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. You want me to risk my life to get this thing for you, but won't tell me what it's for? My dear, it is hardly proper for me to blab the secrets of those who put trust in my discretion. I would not have attained my position at court if I didn't know when to be silent. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other wyverns sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen to political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success. What can I do for you, my dear? Is it too much to hope that you've brought me the heart of the snowy wyvern? If you want the wyvern's heart, you'll tell me what you're using it for. I can do better, darling. Give me the heart, and I'll show you what it's for. Will that suffice? All right. One heart, as requested. How kind of you. Please accept this as your payment. I must begin work immediately. I should apologize. I must admit that I had completely misjudged you, Inquisitor. I would like you to come with me to see this through.
This should only take a moment, Inquisitor. I'm here, my darling. Yes, darling. It's going to be all right, my love. My darling? Bastian? Vivian, I'm sorry. There's nothing here now. Bastian is dead. I can hardly believe. It was the Winter Send Ball. My first visit to the Imperial Palace. The Circle sent a dozen of us to entertain the nobility. I was in awe of everyone and everything, and then our eyes met. Bastien spent the entire ball at my side. The Dowager tried to have him killed for slighting her, but he didn't care. Falling in love across a crowded ballroom. Sounds like something out of a children's story. He was a dashing rogue, and any defects he might have had were made up for with rank and importance. It was a more innocent time, I suppose. Now he's gone, and I... I must write to his son Laurent, and his sister will make a terrible fuss if she isn't informed first. And I'll need to arrange for the Chantry services. Maker only knows how long that will take. If I can help you, just say the word. No, my dear. I'll handle everything. Excuse me, I have so much to do. Planning troop movements now? I'm trying to imagine what it will look like when we're done. All of this once belonged to the Tevinta Imperium. Andraste changed that, as did the Blight. As for what will come next, I cannot guess the Maker's plan. We make the world a better place. Because everyone agrees on what better means. I know I want a world where people trust the Chantry and that trust is respected. I want to respect tradition, but not fear change. I want to right past wrongs, but not avenge them. And I have no idea if my wanting these things makes any of them right. Even if they're not right, they're certainly admirable. Some would disagree. They would call it heresy. It didn't sound like the ravings of a heretic, Cassandra. Perhaps not. But it takes precious little effort to paint even an act of compassion as damaging. Tell me, what guides you? You make decisions that shake the world, yet always seem so assured. I wish I had your confidence. You almost sound like you admire me. I absolutely do. I may not always agree with your decisions, but how many could do what you have done? You were a prisoner, accused and reviled, yet you've emerged from every trial victorious. The Maker's grace does not make you immortal. You live or die by your own hand, that is worthy of admiration. I'm guided by what my conscience tells me. Your conscience must speak more clearly than mine. I doubt it, but I do my best. Think of it. Like Andraste long ago, once again the fate of Thedas will be determined by a woman. It makes me proud to know you. I hope we can call each other friends. I hope so, too. We still have a long road to travel, Inquisitor. Wherever it takes us, I'm glad you're here. Oh, I... 
What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. There's no cause for concern, Your Reverence. With all due respect, you underestimate the effect this man has on the people's good opinion. Do the people know how he's helped the Inquisition? I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor. Only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She does, actually. There are rumors, and her concern is well-meaning, if misplaced. It doesn't matter. <laughs> listen to you. It's good to be the Inquisitor. I should ask, do the rumors bother you? I wish they wouldn't disparage you. They don't know you. <sighs> they know you even less than they know me. Perhaps it's odd to say, but I think of you as a friend, Inquisitor. I have precious few friends. I didn't think to find one here. I... Don't speak. I detest confessions, and I'd like to get this over with. Allow me to say I'll stand beside you, against Corypheus, my countryman, or spurious rumor, so long as you'll have me. No. But you like demons! I enjoy the company of spirits, yes, which is part of why I do not abuse them with bindings. It isn't abuse if I ask. Not always true. Also, I do not practice blood magic, which renders this entire conversation academic. He won't bind me. He's a mage and he likes demons, but he won't help. Why would you want Solus to bind you? So I'm safe. If Solus won't do the ritual to bind me, someone else could. Will. Like the Warden Mages. And then... I'm not me anymore. Walls around what I want. Blocking, bleeding, making me a monster. A mage using blood magic could conceivably do that to any one of us, human or demon. You should ask Solus to bind you too! And then someone can bind him! We'll find a way to keep you safe without binding you, Cole. I have a suggestion, if Cole is ready to listen. I recall stories of amulets used by Ravani seers to protect spirits they summon from rival mages. A spirit? Wearing an amulet of the Unbound was immune to blood magic and binding. It should protect Cole as well. The resources of the Inquisition could be used to find such a talisman. Good. They will not take me. He was supposed to die. He named himself after the horse. I found the amulet that Solas told us about. Would you like to try it on? Yes. But not here. I like it here. We need some place that can go away as it becomes sharp. What do I do with it? You found one of the amulets. Excellent. May I? It is simple enough. You put it on, I charge it with magic, and you should be protected. Are you ready, Cole? 
They can't make me a monster. Ah! What was that? Oh, for... What are you doing to the kid? Stopping blood mages from binding me like the demons at Adamant. But it didn't work. Something is interfering with the enchantment. Something like Cole not being a demon? I'm not certain exactly what Cole is. Regardless of Cole's special circumstances, he remains a spirit. Yes, a spirit who is strangely like a person. I don't matter. Just lock away the parts of me that someone else could knot together to make me follow. Focus on the amulet. Tell me what you feel. Warm, soft blanket covering, but it catches tears. I'm the wrong shape. There's uh, something. There. That way. We'll find whatever is preventing the amulet from working, and we'll make it right. All right, kid. Get Cullen and work with him on the map to figure out where you're sensing something wrong. Will you come with me? All of you? Sure. All right, I get it. You like spirits. But he came into this world to be a person. Let him be one. If I see a way to protect Cole without taking away whatever he is, I'll use it. But Cole clearly needs our help. I'm not saying we do nothing. But that ritual of theirs only works on demons, right? This is not some fanciful story, child of the stone. We cannot change our nature by wishing. You don't think? However we deal with the problem, our next step is to track down whatever is interfering with the enchantment. Yeah, this should get me through the month. Now give me a moment. Greetings. Can I help you? You. You killed me. What? I don't... I don't even know you. You forgot. You locked me in the dungeon in the spire, and you forgot, and I died in the dark! The, the spire? Cole, stop! Just take it easy, kid. He killed me! He killed me! That's why it doesn't work! He killed me, and I have to kill him back! Before anyone gets killed, I need to know what's going on. Cole, this man cannot have killed you. You are a spirit. You have not even possessed a body. A broken body, bloody, banged on the stone cell, guts gripping in the dark, dank. A captured apostate. They threw him into the dungeon in the spire at Valroyo. They forgot about him. He starved to death. I came through to help. And I couldn't, so I became him. Cole. If Cole was an apostate, that'd make the guy we just saw a Templar. Must have been buying Lyrium. Let me kill him. I need to... I need to. Solas? We cannot let Cole kill the man. I don't think anyone was going to suggest that, Chuckles. Cole is a spirit. The death of the real Cole wounded him, perverted him from his purpose. To regain that part of himself, he must forgive. Come on. You don't just forgive someone killing you. You don't. A spirit can. 
Varric. The kid's angry. He needs to work through it. The spirit does not work through emotions. It embodies them. But he isn't a spirit, is he? He made himself human. And humans change. They, they get hurt. And they heal. He needs to work it out like a person. You would alter the essence of what he is. He did that to himself when he left the Fade. I'm just helping him survive it. Cole will never grow into a real person until he comes to terms with what happened. Leave it to me. All right, kid. You want revenge? Come with me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry isn't going to help him now, is it, kid? No. Pull the trigger and put him down like a bad dog. Do it. No! How you doing, kid? Feel any better? No. You can't make it all just go away. I learned that the hard way. Forget. No. He needs to remember. You too. We're done here. The amulet will now never function. Cole remains vulnerable to binding. No, he isn't. The amulet didn't work because he's too human, right? Maybe now the kid's also too human for that binding magic to work on him. I hope you're right. It still hurts. When do I stop hurting? Being with your friends can make you feel better. Come on, kid. Let's go for a walk. It'll clear your head. The left hand misses a friend with two different names. She's hurting, sad, alone, but everyone can see me now. They remember. How do I put honey in Leliana's wine without her noticing? I can help with that. It is good that he is not entirely changed, however human he becomes. Come on, Trim. I'm working my ass off trying to get you to see that move. You still got plenty of ass left, Chief. Ah, uh, Your Worship. Glad you came by. I got a letter from my contacts in the Ben Hasra. Already verified it with red. Do you want to discuss this alone? Not like I was hiding it from my boys. Besides, right now, I need to hit something. You know they've got training dummies, Chief. The training dummy might actually defend itself against the shield bash. Anyway, the Ben Hasrath letter. What did the letter say? The Ben Hasrath have been reading my reports. They don't like Corypheus or his Venatori. And they really don't like Red Lyrium. They're ready to work with us. With you, boss. The Kunari and the Inquisition. Joining forces. That could be a powerful alliance. My people have never made a full-blown alliance with a foreign power before. This would be a big step. They found a massive Red Lyrium shipping operation out on the coast. They wanted us to hit it together. Talked about bringing in one of their dreadnoughts. Always wanted to see one of those big war ships in action. Did you see that? Go get some water. They're worried about tipping the smugglers, so no army. My chargers, you, maybe some backup. What does this alliance really get us? They wouldn't use the word alliance if they didn't mean it. Naval power, more Ben Hasrath reports. 
Kunari soldiers pointed at the Venatori. It could do a lot of good. You don't seem entirely happy about this. No, I'm good. It's... Uh, I'm used to them being over there. It's been a while. I thought Kunari wanted to extend their reach to the whole world. Yeah. Just didn't think I'd see it. Look, the Kune answers a lot of questions. It's a good life for a lot of people. But it's a big change. And a lot of folks here wouldn't do so well under that kind of life. I guess it's not like we're converting. This is just us joining forces against Corypheus. On that front, I think we're good. I think the Inquisition could use some help from the Kunari. Good. I'll pass on word to Colin and Red. We can set up the meeting whenever you're ready. Kunari contacts should be here to meet us. He is? Good to see you again, Hisrad. Gat! Last I heard, you were still in Saharan. They finally decided I'd calm down enough to go back into the world. Boss, this is Gat. We work together in Saharan. It's a pleasure to meet you, Inquisitor. Hisrad's reports say you're doing good work. Iron Bull's name is Hisrad? Under the Kuhn, we use titles, not names. My title was Hisrad, because I was assigned to secret work. You can translate it as Keeper of Illusions, or... Liar. It means liar. Well, you don't have to say it like that. I look forward to working together. Hopefully this will help both our peoples. Tevinter is dangerous enough without the influence of this Venatori cult. Yes. Filthy, decadent brutes, the lot of them. I'm certain life would be much better for all of us under the Kuhn. It was for me. After the Canari rescued me from slavery in Tevinta, I was eight. The Kuhn isn't perfect, but it gave me a better life. Yes, one free from all that pointless free will and independent thought. Such an improvement. The Imperium and the Kunari both have their problems. Fair enough, I suppose. I'm not here to convert anyone. All I care about is stopping this red lyrium from reaching Minrathos. With this stuff, the Vince could make their slaves into an army of magical freaks. We could lose the Heron and see a giant Tevinter army come marching back down here. The Ben Hasrath agree. That's why we're here. Our dreadnought is safely out of view and out of range of any Venatori mages on shore. We'll need to eliminate the Venatori, then signal the dreadnought so it can come in and take out the smuggler ship. What do you think, Bull? Mm, don't know. I've never liked covering a dreadnought run. Too many ways for crap to go wrong. If our scouts underestimate enemy numbers, we're dead. If we can't lock down the Venatori mages, the ship is dead. It's risky. Riskier than letting Red Lyrium into Minrathos? There might be Venatori mages on the ship as well. If the dreadnought can't handle them, it's unlikely there'll be more than two or three mages on the ship, and they'll be dead by the third shot. On land, though, a half-dozen Venatori attacking the Dreadnought from cover could do some serious damage. If it's dangerous for the Dreadnought close to shore, why not attack when the smugglers reach open water? Any decent smuggling ship can outrun a Dreadnought on open water. We need to catch them close to shore. Let's go hold up our end of this bargain, then. My agent suggested two possible locations the Venatori may be camped to guard the shore. There, and there. We'll need to split up and hit both at once. I'll come with you, boss. Krim can lead the charges. Let me fill him in. Come by when you're ready to move. Right. right. Signaling the Dreadnought. Chargers already sent theirs up. See them down there. I knew you gave them the easier job. There's the Dreadnought. Oh, that brings back memories. <laughs> nice one. Crap.
They've still got time to fall back if you signal them now. Yeah. Your men need to hold that position, Bull. They do that. They're dead. And if they don't, the Venatori retake it and the Dreadnought is dead. You'd be throwing away an alliance between the Inquisition and the Canari. You'd be declaring yourself Talvashov. With all you've given the Inquisition, half the Ben Hasra think you've betrayed us already. I stood up for you, Hisrad. I told them you would never become Talvashov. They're my men. I know, but you need to do what's right, Hisrad, for this alliance and for the Kuhn. Call the retreat. Don't! They are falling back. All these years, Hisrad, and you throw away all that you are. For what? For this? For them? I regret that we couldn't protect the Dreadnought. So do I. No way they'll get out of range. Won't be long now. Bull, when the Dreadnought sinks... Sinks? Canary Dreadnoughts don't sink. Come on, let's get back to my boys. Hey, boss. Inquisitor, it is my duty to inform you that there will be no alliance between our peoples. Nor will you be receiving any more Ben Hasrath reports from your Talvishoth ally. You under orders to kill me, Gat? No. The Ben Hasrath have already lost one good man. They'd rather not lose two. So much for that. I'm proud of you, Bull. <laughs> Thanks, boss. You're late. Sorry, Chief. Still sore from fighting off all those vents. Good to see you, Inquisitor. That fight against the Venatori was a bit dicey. We knew that you and the Chief had our backs, Your Worship. The Chief's even breaking open a cask of chasing sack mead for the charges tonight. Damn it, Krem. That's the kind of thing you don't have to mention to the Inquisitor. Sorry, Chief. Ah, forget it. You're doing fine. You wanted to see me? Yeah, yeah, my soul's dust. Yours is scattered all over the ground, though, so... Ugh. Sorry, boss. I thought I might need backup. Guess I'm not even worth sending professionals for. You knew the assassins were coming. Little change in the guard rotation tipped me off. Are you all right? Fine. Hurt myself worse than this fooling around in bed. What if they used poison? Oh, they definitely used poison. Sarkamek, liquid form. If I hadn't been dosing myself with the antidote, I'd be going crazy and puking my guts up right now. As it is, it stings like shit. But that's about it. I hoped the Ben Hasrath would let you go. They did. Sending two guys with blades against me? That's not a hit. That's a formality. Just making it clear that I'm Talvashoth. <sighs> Talva fucking Shoth. You acted like a Talvashoth for years. That didn't change you. Neither does this. That was just a role. This is my life. As one of those. I've killed hundreds of Talvashoth in Saharan. Bandits, murderers, bastards who turned their back on the Kuhn. And now I'm one of them. You're not a Talvashoth. That's a Kunari word, and you don't follow the Kuhn any longer. You're Iron Bull. 
Mercenary captain for the Inquisition. I can live with that. <sighs> anyway, I'll get this cleaned up and let Red know what happened. Boss, whatever I miss, whatever I regret, this is where I want to be. Whenever you need an ass kicked, the Iron Bull is with you. So, Dorian. Yep. <laughs> yes, we've been spending time together. You both deserve to find happiness. Thanks, boss. Dorian's a sweet guy. He's gentle, and he cares under all that bluster. I'm hoping we're good for each other. Plus, I've never done it with a mage before. One time he got so excited he set the curtains on fire. <laughs> See you later, Bull. Nice talking with you, boss. What's going on between you and Iron Bull exactly? <sighs> if only there were a single discreet bone in that lummox. Uh, do you truly want to know? Is this an official concern, or...? <laughs> I'm asking as your friend. How did I not know about this? I wouldn't want anyone to know about this. Just like I wouldn't want anyone to know I fancy Pharrell's and beer. Oh, the shame, Dorian. Well, it's something. A whole lot of something. At first, it was an ill-considered night after drinking. Then there was a second time. And then... I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I suspect neither does the bull. <laughs> now that I've said it out loud, my ancestors are officially turning over in their graves. Oh, well. I should go. As you wish. Inquisitor, I must speak with you. What is it? I must explain something first about the Montelier's fortunes. I remember you said your family had been forbidden from trading in Orlais. It devastated our finances. The Montelliers have, in fact, been in debt for over a hundred years. I had no idea your family's situation was so precarious. Hardly anyone outside the family does. For generations, we've done everything to keep creditors at bay. Sold our lands to stave off interest. It's just... It is infuriating to see my family still reduced to this. I'm to become head of our house. If I sell any more of our land, my family will become destitute. That cannot be my legacy to them. Most people worry about their next meal, never mind an estate. I'm not blind, but I worry for my family. My foolish sister Yvette with her daydreams. My brothers trying to rebuild our fleet with their own hands. Is it wrong to hope they never know hardship? Is there anything I can do? I'd almost solved our problems. For a while. I negotiated a chance to reinstate the Montelliers as landed traders in Orlais. We could rebuild with that. But when I dispatched paperwork to Val Royale... I've just learned my carriers were murdered. And the documents restoring my family's trading status destroyed. Do you have any idea who murdered them? Leliana made inquiries that bore success. Comte Boivere, a nobleman in Valroyo, claims to know who killed my messengers. He has a request that you come when I meet him, so he's seen publicly conferring with you. What will being seen with me gain the Comte? The Comte will drop hints at parties he's to meet with an important visitor. Allies and rivals will take note. Once he's met you, there will be speculation. The Comte will subtly spin reports to his advantage. He will use us. But if he knows who killed my people, I ask that we indulge him. If that's what it takes to get to the bottom of this, I'll meet this Comte with you. Thank you, Inquisitor. It means... You are too kind. I must know who killed my couriers just to harm my family. Do you know where this noble wanted to meet us? I do. The Comte Boisvert has invited us to his mansion, his not far from here. I pray he clears up the deaths of my messengers, as promised. Lead the way.
Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Flaubert. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. We appreciate your help, Comte. The death of Lady Montilly's servants must weigh heavily on you. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archives. Contract for life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montelier's trading exile in Orlais. They're not just after your messengers, Josephine. They'll try for you, too. I... I am afraid so, yes. The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montelliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Or legion businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary by its standards. I'll do what I can to stop these attacks, Josephine. Thank you, Inquisitor. I think I may know how. The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a du paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montelier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to hunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. They're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orle. Even an assassin's word is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. A nun to be tied up later. I'm guessing the actual Comte Boisvert met with a fatal accident. Comte Boisvert slumbers in a nearby closet. Nothing more. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, monsieur. Your idea to seek out the Duparaquette to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, my lady. May we conclude with my departure? Not on your life. As you wish. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. You couldn't have known it would lead to this house of repose coming after you. It still shouldn't have slipped past me. I've tracked down the last du paraquettes. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royale to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. <laughs> It'd still like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. 
I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royale? Give me some time to think this over. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Val Royale. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. I must return to Val Royale to see that everything is in order. Please join me when you can. I read Liliana's report. Her people infiltrated the League of Assassins, targeting you. The contract on your life has been destroyed. You should be safe now. And thus we outwit the House of Repose. It's an unpleasant business, but you're safe now. I've no doubt that the Guild was staffed by vicious men and women, Inquisitor. It's simply... Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer. Bards entertain the Orlesian courts. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Val Royale when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, twists, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, decided this exciting life was for us. You seem a bit... steady for such an outgoing lifestyle. <laughs> the life of an entertainer didn't suit me at all. During one particular intrigue, I encountered a bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bald threw a knife, and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You were only defending yourself. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. He seemed willing enough to murder you for the game. Perhaps. I feel I'm the last to judge whether or not he would have actually used the blade. In all the commotion... Uh, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. Hold on to it. Don't lose sight of why you came here. I will never forget you helped save the House of Montillier, Inquisitor. And should you ever visit Antiva, stories of the welcome we'll give you will be told for years. You have a problem. That over there is a full tavern, but everyone's drinking alone. They're all up their own asses about the Inquisition. I can't have fun with everybody whinging, and they'll fall on their swords before Corypheus can push them. I'm thinking pranks. Set a few up, knock a few down. You win or not? You have an odd idea of preparation. I need to keep them at their best. What's best then, Mopey? Constantly ready for death to fall from the gaping hole up there. <laughs> I know people. Pissed off and fired up is better than dreary bleary. Come on! Lead the way. What, really? Really. <laughs> I knew you were different. Let's go. Right, General Uptight is gone. Have a search about. Find something to mess with and give your soldiers a laugh. What 
the desk. Oh, yes. Center of the Empire and all that. What to do? What to do? All right, Sarah. What do you want to do? The thing looks heavy. Don't want to move or break it. Oh, it's sturdy. I got it. Easy one. Just a slip of something under here. There. Won't notice much. But it's just that little bit wonky. He's so in control that'll piss him royally. I tell one of the soldiers and boom. The general seems like people. And since he works for you, you seem like people. Come on, next one. Right, little lady Chrissy Pants. Watches the door, where she greets every important idiot. Yes. Well, Sarah, what do you have in mind? Um, <laughs> get a bucket. Classic, yeah? Five minutes of sloppy boss gets you weeks of happy kitchen staff. Except for the one who cleans it up, I suppose. But whatever. Next stop. What's that? A lock? No, leave that. Not interested in her hidden things. Not for just a bit of fun. Maybe feed her messenger something gassy? No, bears don't park. But they flap and... Uh... Hmm. Who is up there? Go! <laughs> that was fun. An inquisitor of the people. Still remembering you're one of them. If all they got was the Herald stuff, the serious bit, you'd start to sound pretty scary. That works, but not for long. Whatever it takes. I'd start throwing pies if it kept people inspired. Pies is so good! And Corypheus would never do that. Good thing for you, innit? Because from the bottom, everyone up top sort of seems the same. Anyway, fun time, Inquisitor. You! Ulfric! Oh, you did it! <laughs> I expected ruins. They were. As you see, the Inquisition has not been idle. Would it be possible to meet the Herald before we return to Ghislaine? My dear Laurent, for you, anything. Allow me to present Inquisitor Trevelyan. Your Worship, you do us great honor. Inquisitor, this is my dear Bastien's sister, Grand Cleric Marceline, and his son, Duke Laurent of the Council of Heralds. Madame de Fer has told us what great trials you faced, trying to save my poor brother's life. The Maker called my father to his side. It was valiant of you to champion him in his final hours. If only I'd been able to save Bastien. The Circle of Magi told Bastien many years ago that his illness was incurable. It was simply his time. Would you mind waiting for me in the chapel, my dears? The Inquisitor and I have business to discuss. It has been our very great pleasure, Harold. So you've met the family now, and made a good impression in spite of yourself. Well done. Wait, you talked them into supporting the Inquisition? Of course I did, my dear. Properly worded, the righteous cause of the Inquisition can be used to great effect with my Bastien's deeply pious relations. With Bastien's loss, I have connections to the Council of Heralds and the highest levels of the Chantry. All thanks to you. Well, at least everything's worked out for you in the end. So it has. And well arranged, if I do say so myself. Well, I can't keep Marceline and Laurent waiting. Thank you so much for your cooperation, Inquisitor. I could never have done this without your help. 
I was pondering who might be divine, and it suddenly occurred to me. Is it so ridiculous for the Grand Clerics to support me? Why shouldn't they? If you were divine, what would you do? Change things. Change everything. Your support of the Mage Rebellion was a good start. We must build on this. No more circles. The Mages will be free. The Chantry will accept them as the Maker's children. In fact, it will accept everyone. Elves, Dwarves, even Canari. Why exclude them? The Chantry allows our differences to tear us apart, instead of teaching us how we are the same. I think you would make a good Divine. I am glad to hear it. Your support may persuade the Grand Clerics to vote in my favor. The Chantry was a beacon of hope to me once, you know. In my years at Lothering's Chantry, we turned no one away from our doors. It was a refuge, a place of peace. I felt the Maker's presence and his love even when they told me he'd left us. This is the Chantry I know, the Chantry I wish the world to see. The world could certainly use the force for good you describe. Yes, the Chantry should be a force for good instead of what it is. The Chantry dictated where it should have inspired. It spoke of judgment instead of acceptance. It should encourage the good in everyone rather than rebuke us for our sins. No one should be turned away from our doors. No one is without worth. Whoever you are, whatever your mistakes, you are loved unconditionally. In your heart shall burn an unquenchable flame. Hey you, you have time? It's not a question, let's go. I've got something I want to do for you. Just come, you won't need your gear and stuff. <laughs> With you, I'll do anything. I bet, yeah. Come on, let's do it. We're eating on a roof. They're horrible, right? And raisins, ugh. I freaking still hate cookies. You know, this is about as far from what I expected as we could get. I got caught stealing when I was little, yeah? You get alienage or worse for that. But the Lady Emerald took me in. She was sick and couldn't have children. I had no parents. It worked out. Anyway, she gets a year sicker, so I ask her about cookies. Because mums make cookies. I can pass that down or something. Turns out, she couldn't cook. She missed that talk with her mom. The ones she made, she bought and pretended. Ah, oh, right. Well, no, she was a bitch. She hid buying them by keeping me away from the baker. She did that by lying that he didn't like me, didn't like elves. She let me hate so she could protect her pride. I hated him so much and I hated... Well, she died. And I hate pride. Pride cookies. But this is great, you're great. So I thought maybe me and you could make some. I don't know, us cookies because then I could like them again. Oh, it's stupid. You know what? That would be great. See, I knew. Wait, really? Because it seemed friggin' daft every step to me. I suppose it's not really about them. I hate learning lessons. Makes my stomach hurt. Anyway, I'll throw this rubbish away. Next time we'll be better, yeah? Sarah, any time. Can we get off the roof now? Oh, yes, please. It smells like bird and dank. This part, not a good idea. Thanks, yeah. Feels good, this. Inquisitor, I've found where the Red Templars come from. Theron Fall Redoubt. The knights were fed Red Lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red Lyrium is nothing like the Lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. The Red Templar's swarming haven were proof enough. 
We cannot allow them to gain strength. The Red Templars still require Lyrium. If we find their source, we can weaken them and their leader. I like finding the Red Templars' vulnerabilities before fighting them head on. We'll need every advantage against what courses through their veins. Caravans of Red Lyrium are being smuggled along trade roads. Investigating them could lead to where it's being mined. If you confront them, be wary. Anything connected to Samson will be well guarded. Good to see you again, Inquisitor. Hope you've got your comfortable boots on. The scouts have seen a number of Fade Rifts all over the forest. We've located this mysterious Fairbanks. He won't share his information with anyone but you. He and his men are camped out at Watcher's Reach on the path ahead. From what we can tell, they're refugees from the war. Peasants, mostly. Tell me everything you know about Fairbanks. We don't know much about him. He appeared after the Civil War started, helping people fleeing from the destruction. Fairbanks is likely not his real name. Do you know anything else about the region? They call this place the Emerald Graves. Legend says that a tree grows here for every elven knight of Halam Sharal who perished in its defense. Makes you sad, doesn't it? What was done to the elves here was unforgivable. Never again. At least I hope not. Thank you for the information. I'll head out. Oh, uh, one other thing. A group of deserters from the Imperial armies has established itself here. Freemen of the Dales, they call themselves. They are hostile to the Inquisition and everyone else. Watch your back, Inquisitor. The smugglers we interrogated gave up the Red Templar's main source of red lyrium, Inquisitor. It's located in the Dales, near a town called Sarnia. Destroying the mine there will cripple Samson's operations. Excellent work, Commander. I'll investigate the mine. Destroying the Red Templar's source of lyrium will be a loss Samson won't soon forget. Inquisitor. Scout Harding. We're on the outskirts of Sarnia. This is what's left of the town. The lucky ones got out before the river froze over. The rest, penned in by Fade Rifts and Red Templars. We're the first friendly face they've seen in a long, long while. How did an entire river freeze so quickly? It got really cold, really quickly. Sarnia relies on its river for everything. Trade, food. They weren't expecting this. I should look in on the townsfolk, see what they can tell me. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. The Red Templars have been mounting frequent attacks. They won en plus du Lyon. Bad. Let's get out there and take it back from them. That was generous of you. I do what I can. I am partly to blame for all this. The Red Templars are here because, fool that I am, I sold them my family's quarry. They've taken every worker. We haven't seen them in weeks. And it's not enough. They keep coming, taking more people. And there's nothing I can do to stop them. How could you have sold land to the Red Templars? I didn't know. I swear by Andrasse's fire. They look like knights, chevaliers. Such pretty speeches. They said they would reopen the quarry, bring employment and trade back to Sanya. We'd been struggling since the war began. How could I refuse? It was good for a time. People went to work, they were paid. Then they stopped coming home. After that, the Red Templars stopped pretending. What do you mean the Red Templars take workers? People just disappear. First those who worked the quarry, then they took people from their homes. I don't know why. I just prayed they'd leave me and my family alone. I've been reading the letters found in the quarry. Samson is making red lyrium from people? Not anymore. Not in that mine. I knew Samson had fallen, but this... It's monstrous. We have to put an end to him. Look at these orders from the encampment. That armor must give Samson extraordinary power. We may not be able to stop him. Samson's a menace. If we can't defeat him, no one stands a chance. 
Then we must destroy the armor. I couldn't say how. Templars are trained not to destroy expensive magical equipment. Perhaps Dagna has some ideas. She crafts the impossible every day. Dagna, what have you learned of Samson? He should be dead. I mean, you could make a hat out of red lyrium and kill people, especially the wearer. Samson's armor is genius. To do all this and not go insane, it must be resistant. Or he is insane. Or both. So in addition to killing others, it's slowly consuming him, too. Yes, but slow is not fast. It doesn't matter. I can find a way to hurt him. I just need time and red lyrium. For tests. Is that wise? Everything is safe if handled properly. And you don't touch a bomb. Or breathe it. I mentioned the hat, right? <laughs> no hat. Time and resources, Inquisitor. I'll get what you want. No shoe. I have work to do. Mistress Pullen of Sarnia is accused of aiding and abetting the Red Templars in the Dales. She sold a quarry to them for a handsome sum. They used the quarry to grow red lyrium by enslaving townspeople. The only extenuating circumstance, Mistress Pullen was procuring supplies to keep the remaining townspeople fed. If you'd like to explain your intentions, speak. My crime was misjudgment. The land sale was meant to bring prosperity in hard times. Surely it was clear you were selling to the enemy. We were starving, and they told me they'd reopen the mines. Selling the quarry so hastily was a mistake. I did what I could to rectify it. You made decisions without knowledge of whom you dealt with. That makes villains of anyone. You're free to leave, but don't appear before us again. No, Your Worship. Never. Thank you. No red lyrium, no allies, and soon Samson will have no armor, I hope. You hope? Dagna started work on her red lyrium samples, but she needs more details on the armor. We found orders in the mine. They mentioned Maddox, a name I did not expect to hear. Samson's letter said something about taking over as the vessel. Perhaps it's a rank among the Red Templars. It could be a title from ancient to winter. Or it's some other role Corypheus has planned for Samson, and Maddox is part of it. Did he serve with you and Samson in Kirkwall? Maddox was a mage in Kirkwall's circle. Samson smuggled letters between him and his sweetheart. Eventually, Samson was caught. That's why he was cast out of the Order. Maddox was made tranquil and became a skilled craftsman of magical items. Samson must have rescued him. I can't believe they made a man tranquil over a few love letters. The official charge was corrupting the moral integrity of a Templar. Knight Commander Meredith wielded the brand for far lesser offenses, believe me. Why would Maddox need saving? When the mages rebelled in Kirkwall, the worst battles took place at the gallows in the circle itself. And I thought Maddox had died in the fighting, or was eking out a living on the streets. A hard fate for a tranquil in Samson must have found him, taken him in. Perhaps there's something left of the man Samson used to be. Or he's shrewd enough to know an extraordinary resource. It seems Maddox built Samson's armor for him, and maintains it still. Tranquil and Kirkwall needed rare and expensive supplies for their enchantments. Supplies we can trace. I can have our men kick down some doors, Inquisitor. Samson's armor might lead us right to his stronghold. We have him, Inquisitor. We found Samson's lair. My duties usually keep me here, but for Samson, I'll make an exception. Samson still has that red lyrium armor. All the more reason for me to go. I would sleep better if I knew I would be at your side. We'll depart at your leave.
The heart of Samson's command. I don't see him anywhere. Or hear him. Nor I. Make her tell me he hasn't fled. Hello, Inquisitor. You know me? It's Maddox. Samson's tranquil. Something's wrong. I'll send for the healers. That would be a waste, Knight Captain Cullen. I drank my entire supply of Blightcap essence. It won't be long now. We only wanted to ask you questions, Maddox. Yes. That is what I could not allow. I destroyed the camp with fire. We all agreed it was best. Our deaths ensured Samson had time to escape. You threw your lives away? For Samson? Why? Samson saved me even before he needed me. He gave me purpose again. I... wanted to help. We should check the camp. Maddox may have missed something. Some place to die. It can't have been much of a place to live either under Samson's command. What else do you remember about Samson? The man he used to be. Does it matter? He used to be kind, only carries so far. Yet Maddox died to help him escape. <laughs> Samson does command loyalty. Is there anything in the camp that could help? Or point us to Samson? It's hard to tell. All I see is smoke and ash. If this is Samson's idea of remaking the world. I prefer yours. We can't leave Maddox here. He should be properly laid to rest. I'll have someone take care of it. If even Samson did his best for Maddox, we can do no less. I'll keep looking around. Lyrian bottles licked clean. Licking the bottles when some people stop and take a hard look at their life choices. How much red lyrium is Samson taking? His resistance must be extraordinary. The red lyrium deposits are being destroyed, and we've cut the red Templars down to the core. It's a pity Maddox thought his sacrifice was the only answer. But that leaves Samson with a severely curtailed army, and enchanted army he can't maintain. You did it. We both fought to make this happen. Don't sell yourself short. Well, I... thank you. But my work's not done yet. We're getting recruits by the hour. There's more than a few ex-Templars among them. We've struck a blow and given people hope. This is a true victory. Inquisitor, I finished it. Are you talking? Sorry. Have it anyhow. <laughs> you mean this rune? It's not just any rune. I made it with red lyrium and what's left of poor Maddox's tools. The rune acts on the median fissures of lyrium to... It'll destroy Samson's armor. He'll be powerless. We should render our enemies powerless at a stroke more often. Maddox covered Samson's tracks thoroughly. But wherever Samson's retreated, we'll find him. Your army stands ready, Inquisitor. For Samson, for Corypheus, for whatever you command. What's the state of the Inquisition? Our alliance with Orle holds, for the present. They'll send aid on request. And your actions at Adamant denied Corypheus his army of pet demons. With Orle's support, our numbers match his. Corypheus's followers must be panicking. My agents agree. Our victories have shaken his disciples. Perhaps they'll rethink following the Darkspawn Magister from the dawn of time. Where is Corypheus now? After Adamant, Corypheus uprooted his major strongholds and sent them marching south to the Arbor Wilds. His army clearly wasn't prepared to flee. Our victories have them on the defensive. They've terrorized Thetis long enough. We end them now. If Corypheus is hiding in the Arbor Wilds, that's where we'll go. But what is Corypheus doing in such a remote area? His people have been ransacking elven ruins since Haven. 
We believe he seeks more. What he hopes to find, however, continues to elude us. Which should surprise no one. Fortunately, I can assist. You have my attention, Lady Morrigan. What Corypheus seeks in those forgotten woods is as ancient as it is dangerous. Which is? His best, if I show you. This is an Illuvian, an elven artifact from a time long before their empire was lost to human greed. I restored this one at great cost, but another lies within the Arbor Wilds. That is what Corypheus seeks. It's beautiful in its way. I found legends of an elven temple within the Arbor Wilds. Untouched, it proved too dangerous to approach, and thus I turned elsewhere to find my prize. If Corypheus has turned southward, he could succeed where I failed. The Illuvian would be his. What does it do? A more appropriate question would be, where does it lead? If this place once had a name, it has long been lost. I call it the Crossroads, a place where all Illuvians join, wherever they might be. This place is extraordinary. How could this even exist? Who can say? Formed from the fabric of time and space, perhaps. The ancient elves left no roads, only ruins hidden in far-flung corners. This is how they traveled between them. As you can see, most of the mirrors are dark, broken, corrupted, or unusable. As for the rest, a few can be opened from this side, but only a few. This place isn't natural. It almost seems... constructed. It's as if someone made a pocket within the Fade, with its own rules of reality. If the ancient elves could do this... It seems remarkable that the Magisters of Tevinter could ever challenge them. Yes. It's... deteriorating. Eventually, this place will simply collapse on itself. Who can say how old it is? For now, it stands, and thus retains its value. How did you find out about this place? My travels have led me to many strange destinations, Inquisitor. Once, they led me here. It offered sanctuary. Sanctuary? Not all the mirrors lead back to our world. The ancients were nothing if not resourceful. 
If they don't lead back to our world, then... Places... between, like... this one. I can describe it no better. For a time, I had a safe place to raise my son. But only for a time. One cannot remain in between forever. What do you mean a few can be open from this side? Some of the Illuvians have been left unlocked, like doors accidentally left ajar. All others are closed. They can be opened only from beyond. Opened how? With a key. I suppose you have such a key? The key can be many things. Each Alluvian is different. I have knowledge as well as power. Often that is enough. Corypheus wants to come here. This is not the Fade, but it is very close. Someone with enough power could tear down the ancient fairy and enter the Fade in the flesh, like Corypheus wanted to do with the Anchor. He learned of the Alluvian in the Arbor Wilds as I did. He marshals the last of his forces to reach it. You have made Corypheus desperate, Inquisitor. We must work together to stop him, and soon. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. You're just in time. We almost had to start without you. What exactly were you starting without me now? I found her, Ruffles. Deal her in. I do hope I recall the rules. It's been ages since I've played a game of Wicked Grace. Grab a seat. We're ready to start. Are we playing cards or what? Are three drakes better than a pair of swords? Ugh, I can never remember. Seeker, remember how I said, don't show anyone your hand? That rule includes announcing it to the table. There's a crown on his head, but a sword too. His head didn't want either. Don't talk to the face cards, kid. You seem to have enough people. I have a thousand things to do. Losing money can be both relaxing and habit for me. Give it a try. Curly, if any man in history ever needed a hobby, it's you. Dealer starts. Oh, I believe I start at... Oh, three coppers. Do you think that's too daring? Maybe I'll make it one. No. Boldness. Three it is. Seriously, who starts at three coppers? Silver or go home? Sounds good. I'm in. Bolder the better, right? I'm in. Me too. Well, are you in? I'm in, and raising another silver. <laughs> you haven't even looked at your cards. Well, our illustrious leader is betting we're bluffing. You are bluffing. <laughs> the poor recruit ran out into the dining hall in nothing but his knickers. And this profound silence fell over the hall as 70 mages and 30 Templars all turned to stare at once. Then a slow round of applause began and spread until every soul was on their feet, a standing ovation. <laughs> what, what did he do? Saluted, turned on his heel, and marched out like he was in full armor. <laughs> he did not. Good man. Ha, you're shitting us. <laughs> That's how you know it's true. I could never put that in a book. Too unlikely. I think we need another round of drinks. I'll get them. Don't start without me. And the dealer takes everything. I win again. Deal again. I figured out your tells, Lady Ambassador. Commander, everyone knows a lady has no tells. Then let's see if your good fortune lasts one more hand. I want another chance to win my dignity back. Deal me in.
Don't say a word, dwarf. <laughs> I tried to warn you, Curly. Never bet against an Antiva, Commander. I'm leaving. I don't want to witness our Commander's walk of shame back to the barracks. Well, I do. It comes off. I didn't know it came off. I'm glad you decided to join us tonight. It's too easy to mistake you for the Inquisitor. I enjoyed this. See? That's what I mean. It's easy to forget you're not just an icon or symbol. Like those statues of Andraste holding bowls of fire. A at least it is for me. You up for another game when this is all over, Inquisitor? I wouldn't miss it. Good. It'll take me a while to talk Cullen into it. Maybe I'll work the revenge angle. Who's that? Did I win? Is there anything I should know? Only that I'm never playing cards again. I still can't find my... Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't know how Varric talked me into that. That's too bad. Watching you lose made me want to play cards more often. I do not need help embarrassing myself in front of you. You were blushing. It was adorable. Make us breath. Inquisitor, <laughs> thank the Maker you're here. Morrigan chased after her son into the Alluvian. She was terrified. She was chasing Kieran? She said he activated the mirror somehow, and then she ran into it. I've never seen Morrigan like that. You must go after her. I will find help, Inquisitor. Go back. I must find Kieran before it's too late. Why would Kieran do this? How could he do this? We stand in the Fade. To direct the Illuvian here would require immense power. If he is lost to me now after all I have sacrificed... We'll find him, Morrigan. He can't be far. The Fade is infinite. He could literally be anywhere. Whatever happens to him now, it is my doing. I set him on this path. Please, help me look, Inquisitor. Just a little longer. Mother! Mother. Now, isn't this a surprise? Clearly not the good sort of surprise. My lovely Morrigan has a flair for the dramatic. Thankfully, my grandson is more sensible. Kieran is not your grandson. Let him go. As if I were holding the boy hostage. She's always been ungrateful, you see. Ungrateful? I know how you plan to extend your life, wicked crone. You will not have me, and you will not have my son. That's quite enough. You'll endanger the boy. <gasps> what have you done to me? I have done nothing. You drank from the well of your own volition. <gasps> you... are Mathal. Well, that was unexpected. You, of all people, should expect the unexpected by now. I'm sorry, Mother. I heard her calling to me. She said now was the time. I do not understand. Once I was but a woman. Crying out in the lonely darkness for justice. And she came to me.
a wisp of an ancient being, and she granted me all I wanted and more. I have carried Mithal through the ages ever since, seeking the justice denied to her. Then you carry Mithal inside you. She is a part of me, no more separate than your heart from your chest. You hear the voices of the well, girl. What do they say? They... say you speak the truth. But what was Mithal? A legend given name and called a god? Or something more? Truth is not the end, but a beginning. A herald indeed, shouting to the heavens, harbinger of a new age. As for me, I have had many names, but you may call me Flemeth. Mithal is within you. Why not reveal yourself? And to whom should I reveal myself? To the elves. To everyone. <laughs> I knew the hearts of men even before Mithal came to me. It is why she came to me. They do not want the truth. And I, I am but a shadow lingering in the sun. Why did Mithal come to you? For a reckoning that will shake the very heavens. And you follow her whims. Do you even know what she truly is? You seek to preserve the powers that were, but to what end? It is because I taught you, girl. Because things happened that were never meant to happen. She was betrayed as I was betrayed, as the world was betrayed. Mithal clawed and crawled her way through the ages to me, and I will see her avenged! Alas, so long as the music plays, we dance. I presume you know what we're up against. Better than you could possibly imagine. So will you help us? Once I have what I came for. No, I will not allow it. He carries a piece of what once was, snatched from the jaws of darkness. You know this. He is not your pawn, Mother. I will not let you use him! Have you not used him? Was that not your purpose, the reason you agreed to his creation? That was them. Now he... He is my son. Flemeth extends her life by possessing the bodies of her daughters, Inquisitor. That was the fate she intended for me. I thwarted her, and now she intends to have Kieran instead. Wait, the way she talked about Kieran. I am not the only one carrying the soul of a being long thought lost. He is more than that, Mother. As am I. Yet do you hear me complain? Our destinies are not so easily avoided, dear girl. Allah, uh, I have to. You do not belong to her, Kieran. Neither of us do. If Kieran is so special, why did you wait until now to come for him? I did not know where he was. Morrigan cleverly hid him from me. Until now. Was the well. Always grasping beyond your reach, despite all that I taught you. Whatever else you think he is, Kieran is still a child. And so much better behaved than his mother was at his age. Kieran, I. As you wish. Hear my proposal, dear girl. Let me take the lad, and you are free of me forever. I will never interfere with or harm you again. Or keep the lad with you, and you will never be safe from me. I will have my due. I will take my chances. 
I found you once, girl. What makes you think I will not find you again? Take over my body now, if you must. Just let Kieran go. He will be better off without me. Just as I was better off without him. No more dreams? No more dreams. A soul is not forced upon the unwilling, Morrigan. You were never in danger from me. Listen to the voices. They will teach you. As I never did. Wait! Right, Kieran. You are not hurt. I feel lonely. She wanted the old god soul all along. Is it worth reminding myself that perhaps I do not know everything after all? My mother has the soul of an elven goddess, or whatever Mithal truly was, and her plans are unknown to me. You truly had no idea what she was? I knew she kept the truth from me. I even suspected she was not truly human, but this... I always thought the so-called elven gods were little more than glorified rulers, but now... I have doubt. And doubt is... an uncomfortable thing, Inquisitor. Just be thankful you did not drink from the well. I am evidently tied to my mother... for eternity. So Kieran had the soul of an old god, taken from the Archdemon at the final battle of the Fifth Blight. Yes, he has never known anything else. I'm uncertain what effect this will have on him. But why did you... I told you at the temple, the magic of old must be preserved, no matter how feared. Kieran had a destiny, and now it is in Flemeth's hands. I suppose we shall see what she does with it. For what it's worth, I think you did the right thing. Did I? She was testing me, and I cannot tell whether I passed. Now, we must prepare to face Corypheus himself. It seems Mother was right. The voices of the well tell me I will be able to match his dragon. All that remains is for you to find him. I do not like having that mirror, Illuvian, in Skyhold. Corypheus may not be able to travel through it, but what if something else can? I don't think Morrigan would keep it here if that were true. Yes. Morrigan said as much when I asked her. Oh? She said I was unreasonable, then offered to explain how the Illuvian works using words with less than four syllables. Ah. Oh. The Circle had a library. I'm fairly well read. Right. I'm not unreasonable. Do you have some time? Of course. I need to borrow you. By all means, give me a moment.
With an Illuvion, Corypheus could cross into the Fade in the flesh. Indeed, the Inquisitor can attest that these artifacts still work, if one knows how to use them. What happens when Corypheus enters the Fade? Why, he will gain his heart's desire and take the power of a god. Or, and this is more likely, the lunatic will unleash forces that tear the world apart. In Redcliffe, I saw the future Corypheus built. We can't let that happen. It was always so, was it not? The madman would bury us all. Pardon me, but does this mean everything's lost unless we get to the Alluvian before him? Corypheus has a head start, no matter how quickly our army moves. We should gather our allies before we march. Can we wait for them? We should send our spies ahead to the Arbor Wilds. Without support from the soldiers? You'd lose half of them. Then what should we do? You overcome it, all three of you, together. Josephine, have our allies send scouts to meet us in the wilds. Liliana, your fastest agents, will join them. Together, we'll have enough spies to slow down Corypheus' army until Cullen's soldiers arrive. <laughs> Such confidence. But the Arbor Wilds are not so kind to visitors. Old elven magic lingers in those woods. We'd be remiss to not take advantage of your knowledge, Lady Morgan. Please, lend us your expertise. Tis why I came here. Although it is good to see its value recognized. Any further instructions, Inquisitor? The Inquisition began as a handful of soldiers. Thanks to you, we're now a force that will topple a self-proclaimed god. I could ask for no finer counsel, no better guidance. I speak for all of us when I answer. We could ask for no finer cause. We'll hound Corypheus in the wilds before he can find the temple or this Illuvion. Inquisitor. How goes the battle, Captain? The Red Templars fall beneath our blades, Your Worship. Commander Cullen says they're nearly finished. Our scouts saw Corypheus traveling towards an elven ruin to the north. We can clear you a path through his armies. Do only what you must. <laughs> we need enough people for a celebration when we get back to Skyhold. We will not fail you, my lady, no matter what comes. Andraste guide you, Inquisitor. I wonder, is it Andraste your soldiers invoke during battle, or does a more immediate name come to their lips? Another way to let people down if I falter. Thank you for the reminder. Twas not I who raised an army of faithful to storm this land, Inquisitor. 
But I digress. If your scouts report accurately, I believe these ruins to be the temple of Mathal. Which is? A place of worship out of elven legend. If Corypheus seeks it, then the Illuvian he covets lies within. Let us hope we reach this temple before the entire forest is reduced to ash. Namilana Savanale. They still think to fight us, Master. These are but remnants. They will not keep us from the Well of Sorrows. Well of Sorrows? Be honored. Witness death at the hands of a new god. Cannot be! Across the bridge! Now! At last, Mathal's sanctum. Let us proceed before Corypheus interferes. You said Corypheus wanted an Illuvian, but he mentioned a well of sorrows, which is right. I am uncertain of what he referred to. Could they be the same? Could Illuvian translate into well of sorrows? No. It seems an Illuvian is not the prize Corypheus seeks. Yes, I was wrong. Does that please you? Whatever the Well of Sorrows might be, Corypheus seeks it, and thus you must keep it from his grasp. Let's find this well before Corypheus's people do. It appears the temple's magics are still strong. Is this Elven? Does it say anything about this Well of Sorrows? Atisho, via Abalassan. It means enter the path of the Well of Sorrows. There is something about knowledge, respectful or pure. Shiven. Shivenen. Tis all I can translate. That it mentions the Well is a good omen. We're out of luck. Unless one of those temple elves drops a lexicon. Supplicants to Mathal would have first paid obeisance here. Following their path may aid entry. Hold them off!
Hold a moment. While they rush ahead, this leads to our true destination. We should walk the petitioner's path as before. People are dying outside while we stand here. If we use the tunnel, more of our soldiers can flee. In this case, I must agree with the witch. This is ancient ground, deserving of our respect. You see the urgency? We cannot find the Well of Sorrows unprepared. You're very eager to reach our destination. Are we not all eager to stop Corypheus from achieving his mad plan? Sounds like what you want is that well. There is a danger to the natural order. Legends walked Thedas once, things of might and wonder. Their passing has left us all the lesser. Corypheus would squander the ancient power of the well. I would have it restored. I wasn't expecting your answer to be so romantic. Trust me, your surprise is matched only by my own. Mankind blunders through the world, crushing what it does not understand. Elves, dragons, magic. The list is endless. We must stem the tide, or be left with nothing more than the mundane. This I know to be true. I read more in the first chamber than I revealed. It said a great boon is given to those who use the Well of Sorrows, but at a terrible price. What exactly did that altar say about the Well of Sorrows? Like most elven writing, it was insufferably vague. The term I deciphered was Halam Shivanas, the sweet sacrifice of duty. It implies the loss of something personal for duty's sake, yet for those who served at this temple, a worthwhile trade. Did you not trust me enough to tell me about this price when you read it? I hoped to find more information. If I intended to cheat you, I would have feigned ignorance entirely. My priority is your cause, but if the opportunity arises to save this well, I am willing to pay the cost. And gain what? That is what we must discover. The rituals may point the way. Tis not what I expected. What was this chamber used for? Hmm. We're being watched. Venavis, you are unlike the other invaders. You stumble down our paths at the side of one of our own. You bear the mark of magic, which is familiar. How has this come to pass? What is your connection to those who first disturbed our slumber? They are my enemies, as well as yours. I am called Abelas. We are sentinels, tasked with standing against those who trespass on sacred ground. We wake only to fight, to preserve this place. Our numbers diminish with each invasion. I know what you seek. Like all who have come before you, you wish to drink from the Vira Belasar. The place of the Way of Sorrows. He speaks of the well. It is not for you. It is not for any of you. So, your elves from ancient times, before the Tevinter Imperium destroyed Arlathan, the Shemlin did not destroy Alathan. We Elven warred upon ourselves. By the time the doors to this sanctuary closed, our time was over. We awaken only when called, and each time find the world more foreign than before. It is meaningless. We endure. The Virabella San must be preserved. What is this Virabella San exactly? It is a path, 
One walked only by those who toiled in Mithal's favor. He speaks of priests, perhaps. More than that, you need not know. Solus, perhaps he'll listen to you. What shall I say, Inquisitor? Shall I sway him from a millennia of service by virtue of our shared blood? He clings to all that remains of his world, because he lacks the power to restore it. We did not come here to fight you, nor to steal from your temple. I believe you. Trespassers you are, but you have followed rites of petition. You have shown respect to Mithal. If these others are enemies of yours, we will aid you in destroying them. When this is done, you shall be permitted to depart. And never return. This is our goal, is it not? There is no reason to fight these Sentinels. Consider carefully. You must stop Corypheus, yes, but you may also need the well for your own. I accept your offer. You will be guided to those you seek. As for the Vera Belisan, it shall not be despoiled, even if I must destroy it myself. No! Morgan! Tough bastard. A day's march, hours of fighting, and still fierce as dragons. The Chantry never knew what it was throwing away. Samson, sir, watch out! Inquisitor, you and those elf things don't know when to stop. You've hunted us half across Thedas. I should have guessed you'd follow us into this hole. Your reserves are gone, so is the Lyrium. Isn't it time to stand down? To enjoy the mercy you showed our brothers and sisters? No thanks. Corypheus chose me twice. First as his general, now as the vessel for the Well of Sorrows. You know what's inside the well? Wisdom. The kind of wisdom that can scour a world. I give it to Corypheus, that he can walk into the Fade without your precious anchor. What's your part in it? What's a vessel? What else empties a well? I'll carry its power to Corypheus. One more task entrusted to me. Being force-fed Chantry Lyrium was good for something. This armor makes me a living fortress, mind and body. I won't forget a word of the well's knowledge. Corypheus will be unstoppable. Once Corypheus is that powerful, you and your soldiers will just slow him down. You dare say that to my face? After you butchered my men? You're no match for Corypheus. Even if you drink from the well, you'll never master its wisdom as he could. This is the strength that Chantry tried to bind. But it's a new world now, with a new god. So, Inquisitor. How will this go? Power's all well and good until it's taken away. What did you do? What did you do? My armor is gone. The lyrium. I need it. Kill them all. Take it from Corypheus. You mustn't. He's still breathing. We can take him back to Skyhold for judgment. heard his parting words, Inquisitor. The elf seeks to destroy the Well of Sorrows. So the Sanctum is despoiled at last. You would have destroyed the Well yourself, given the chance. 
to keep it from your grasping fingers. Better it be lost than bestowed upon the undeserving. Fool. You'd let your people's legacy rot in the shadows. Enough. You cannot honestly... I said enough. The well clearly offers power, Inquisitor. If that power can be turned against Corypheus, can you afford not to use it? Do you even know what you ask? As each servant of Mithal reached the end of their years, they would pass their knowledge on through this. All that we were, all that we knew, it would be lost forever. This can't be easy, holding on to what's left. You cannot imagine. Each time we awaken, it slips further from our grasp. There are other places, friend, other duties. Your people yet linger. Elven such as you? Yes, such as I. You have shown respect to Mithal, and there is a righteousness in you I cannot deny. Is that your desire? To partake of the Vera Belasan as best you can? To fight your enemy? Gifts like this don't come freely. No boon of Mithal was ever granted without cost. The Vera Belasan may be too much for a mortal to comprehend. Brave it if you must, but know you this. You shall be bound forever to the will of Mithal. Bound to a goddess who no longer exists, if she ever did. Bound as we are bound. The choice is yours. Is it possible this Mithal might still exist? Anything is possible. Elven legend states that Mithal was tricked by Fen Harel and banished to the beyond. Elven legend is wrong. The Dread Wolf had nothing to do with her murder. Murder? I, I said nothing of. She was slain, if a god truly can be, betrayed by those who destroyed this temple. Yet the Virabella San remains, as do we. That is something. Are you leaving the temple? Our duty ends. Why remain? There is a place for you, Letheline, if you seek it. Perhaps there are places the Shamlin have not touched. It may be that only Uthenera awaits us. The blissful sleep of eternity never to awaken, if fate is kind. Thank you for this gift, Abalas. Do not thank me yet, Shemlin. Malas Amali Nahalam Abalas. His name, Abalas, means sorrow. I said, I hope he finds a new name. You'll note the intact Illuvian. I was correct on that count, at least. Is it still a threat? Can Corypheus use it to travel the Fade? You recall when I took you through my Alluvian, I said each required a key? The well is the key. Take its power, and Mathal's last Alluvian will be no more use to Corypheus than glass. I did not expect the well to feel so... hungry. Let's not be reckless. I don't want anyone hurt. I am willing to pay the price the well demands. I am also the best suited to use its knowledge in your service. Or more likely to your own ends? What would you know of my ends, elf? You are a glutton drooling at the sight of a feast. You cannot be trusted. Of those present, I alone have the training to make use of this. Let me drink, Inquisitor. 
you alone? You're not the only mage here. I have studied the oldest lore. I have delved into mysteries of which you could only dream. Can you honestly tell me there is anyone better suited? What about you, Solas? No. Do not ask me again. Perhaps you're right. I am. You know I am. You're not concerned about the price? Bound forever to the will of Mithal. Bound to the will of a dead god? It seems an empty warning. Perhaps a compulsion yet remains. Who can say otherwise? I do not fear it, even so. Are you sure you want this, Morgan? We don't know what will happen. We do not, and yet it must be done. I am ready. Thoughts? She is right about only one thing. We should take the power which lies in that well. If it is truly between you and her, then let her take the risk. Make her help us all. So many voices. They would be in your head, talking over you. You don't want them. Enough deliberation. Give me your decision. It's yours. Morgan, are you all right? Elasim Salah, Fisan, Fisan Allah. I, I am intact. There is much to sift through, but now we can. It is done. Pleased to report we won the battle, Inquisitor. When you went through that mirror, Corypheus and his archdemon fled the field. I'm not sure why. What he wanted was no longer within the temple. Perhaps. He spent so long trying to get into the temple, he probably couldn't have helped his forces by that point. Then Corypheus is finished. If he is wise, he will hide and rebuild his strength before he attacks again. He will not hide. 
Meaning he will attack us directly, at Skyhold. Not necessarily, but neither will he remain idle. And how could you have such insight into his plans? The Well of Sorrows held many voices, and they speak to me now from across the ages. They hold wisdom, secrets I never dreamed possible. But even they fear what Corypheus has become. Should we fear him more than his army? Possibly. Luckily for you, he has a weakness. The dragon he calls is not truly an archdemon. It is a dragon in which Corypheus has infested part of his being. He doubtless did so out of pride to emulate the gods of old. That pride can be exploited. Kill the dragon. And his ability to leap into other bodies is disrupted. He can be slain. Just kill his dragon? Why didn't we think of that before? There is a way to defeat the dragon, to match Corypheus in his power. The well whispers it to me now. Your help will be required, Inquisitor. Speak to me when you are ready, and we shall begin. I'll see to Skyhold's defenses in the meantime. Forgive me, Inquisitor. For personal interest, I have relieved Josephine, as you might expect. Knight Templar Samson, general to Corypheus, traitor to the Order. The blood on his hands cannot be measured. His head is too valuable to take. Kirkwall, Orlay, many would see him suffer. I can't say I'm not one of them. Judging him will affect as many as his crimes. I won't take it lightly. The Red Lyrium will steal your vengeance. You know what it does. Corypheus only delayed my corruption. Are you still loyal to that thing? He poisoned the Order, used them to kill thousands. Templars have always been used. How many were left to rot like I was after the Chantry burned away their minds? Piss on it. I followed him so Templars could at least die at their best. Same lie as the Chantry. The Prophet just isn't as pretty. I found your people. They believed in you. Believed your cause was righteous. Not your business, Inquisitor. Your friend Maddox was so loyal, he killed himself for you. They were always going to die. I saw what Corypheus was doing. So yes, I fed them hope instead of despair. I made them believe their pain had purpose, just like the Chantry does. <laughs> right, Commander? It ended as well as anything else I've done. Corypheus would kill me on sight. I'll tell your people what they want. Everything I cared about is destroyed. Very well. Samson, you will spend your remaining years serving the Inquisition. Cullen will be your handler. Perhaps he can get something useful out of you. I doubt the Commander believes there's anything worthy left in me. You're not wrong. You serve something greater than yourself once. Perhaps you can be made to remember that. <sighs> Samson took everything from those Templars. He corrupted their souls, twisted them into everything they stood against, everything they would have hated. I know the Red Templars fight for Corypheus, but I feel sorry for them. They're barely human now. The Red Lyrium left Samson's mind unaltered. He knew what he was doing. And he dares speak as though it were a mercy? The man's a monster. I pray his information is useful. His life is good for little else. Samson is everything you say, but it's over. You have to let this go. Over for us, perhaps. For Samson. Not for those still controlled by Corypheus. 
The Red Templars needed to be torn down. We've broken Corypheus' army. I might have known some of them. If my life had gone differently, I might have been one of them. Do you ever wonder what would have happened if you had not been at the Conclave? If you'd never become the Inquisitor? A life without you? Never. Corypheus died, and then he didn't. That's why he always felt wrong, like he didn't fit inside himself. He wears another man's life. I thought dying was forever. So did I. Corypheus seems to break a lot of rules. Is he real? If a man can be dead and then not... Could I have saved the real Cole? What happened to him wasn't your fault. His hands were bruised from beating on the wall. It was dark, like the cabinet where he hid to escape his father. His belly hurt like knives, throat cracked dry. He was alone. I pushed through and held his hand. It was all I could do. He said, thank you. Thank you. Victory in the Arbor Wilds. The Archdemon might have been a real threat to our army, but it flew off once we turned the tide. It is still out there, however. I wonder what Corypheus plans now. We'll deal with whatever he throws at us. Do not underestimate Corypheus. He is powerful, and you have yet to fight him one on one. But he will come. You will get your chance. You don't seem concerned about that. I am terrified, yet I have faith in you. Not long ago, this was impossible to imagine. You, a valued friend, victory close at hand. The time has come to consider what will come next. You'll be the next divine, I assume. That has not happened yet. But it may. If the Maker wills it, then yes, I will answer his call. Blessed are they who stand before the corrupt and the wicked and do not falter. You have come far, my friend. It has been an honor. What happened at the Elven Temple? It's got me thinking. I should go back, shouldn't I? To Tavinta. Once this is done, if we're still alive. All my talk of how terribly wrong things are back home. But what do I do about it? Nothing. How does this relate to the Elven Temple? You encountered ancient elves, a piece of history Something the Imperium didn't destroy. Maybe my people can atone for what we've done. There is something still left to restore. Maybe not all of us want to, but that could be altered. If you can change minds, so can I. You're not doing nothing, Dorian. You came here. You're fighting with us. Thank you for saying that. I want to do more than stop Corypheus, however. I want to save my home. It might surprise you to know that you're the one who inspired me. You're shaping the world for good or ill. How could I aspire to do any less? If it means proving that Tevinter can be better, that there's hope even for my homeland, I would do anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh wait, no I'm not. 
It's just the funniest, isn't it? That creaky old Abelos in Mythal saying the elves weren't destroyed by Tevinter. An admission that did not come easy. Of course it didn't, because that's elf the elves thing, being the sore losers of history. I never hear the end of it. Like being sad makes them better than me. Turns out they're not victims. They're the same as everyone else. Arseholes. Plus, a big old temple full of demon worshipping lies. Grand, that. Why are you dismissing what happened in Mythal? Of course. None of it holds up. I mean, it was impressive and all. Makes the Dalish look like tits for living in the woods, but so what? There can't be a bunch of gods. And the Maker. Don't matter how much or little you believe, those don't fit. So call me stupid, but I believe the stuff not made up by dead people who failed. Mythal is a ruin full of demons. I mean, it just makes sense, right? There's so much history there. What if some of it is true? No, now you're stupid. You can't think that because it's stupid. But everything we saw... Why believe it? Because Abelas looked weird. If that's all it takes, Kerifi's shit heel is full of lumpy truth. You're not even an elf. Why are you being so damned elfy? You're the frigging herald of Andraste. Every time you open your mouth, you'll sound like an idiot. The Inquisition is probably used to me sounding like an idiot. Not for me to say, yeah. Just saying. Anyway, believe what you want. So long as we kill Kariffy fish, whatever. The Temple of Mithal was extraordinary. In all my journeys, I never dreamed of finding anything like it. What will you do with the power of the well once Corypheus is dead? This war proved that we can't go back to the way things were. I'll try to help this world move forward. You would risk everything you have in the hope that the future is better. What if it isn't? What if you wake up to find the future you shaped is worse than what was? We've done all right so far. We'll have problems, yes, but we can handle them. Such confidence. What's the alternative? Do nothing? We have to keep trying. You're right. Thank you. For what? You have not been what I expected, Inquisitor. You have... impressed me. You have offered hope that if one keeps trying, even if the consequences are grave, that someday things will be better. Forgive my melancholy. Corypheus has cost us much. The Temple of Methal did not deserve such a fate. The orb he carries, and its stolen power, that at least we may still recover. With luck. Some of the past may yet survive. Thank you, Solus. We couldn't have done this without you. You are welcome. Though all before me is shadow, yet shall the Maker be my guide. I shall not be left to wander the drifting roads of the beyond. For there is no darkness in the Maker's light, and nothing that he has wrought shall be lost. A prayer for you? For those we have lost, and those I am afraid to lose. You're afraid? Of course I am. Corypheus possessed that Grey Warden at Mythal. What more is he capable of? It's only a matter of time before he retaliates. We must draw strength wherever we can. When the time comes, you will be thrown into his path again. Andraste, preserve me. I must send you to him. There's nothing to worry about. I have luck on my side, remember? <laughs> That's less comforting than I'd hoped. Whatever happens, you will come back. Cullen, you don't have to... Allow me this. To believe anything else would... Did you find what you need, Morrigan? 
I can match the Darkspawn Magister's dragon. Yes, as for matching Corypheus, that is up to you, Inquisitor. Believe me, I know. Then all that remains is to find Corypheus before he comes to us. We've been looking for his base since all this began, with no success. His dragon must come and go from somewhere. Oh, what about the Deep Roads? We could send word to Orzammar, a higher envoys too. It seems Corypheus is not content to wait. He's in the Valley of Sacred Ashes? You either close the breach once more, or it swallows the world. But that's madness. Wouldn't it kill him as well? Inquisitor, we have no forces to send with you. We must wait for them to return from the Arbor Wilds. I must go now, before it's too late. your maker now call him call down his wrath upon me you cannot for he does not exist I am Corypheus I shall deliver you from this lie in which you linger bow before your new god and be spared never Ends here, Corypheus. I'm so shall. successful in foiling my plans but let us not forget what you are a thief in the wrong place at the wrong time an interloper a gnat we shall prove here once and for all which of us is worthy of godhood i'm the maker's chosen
Let it end here! Let the skies boil! Let the world be rent asunder! Not like this. I have walked the halls of the Golden City, crossed the ages. Dumat, ancient ones, I beseech you. If you exist, if you ever truly existed, aid me now. Solas? Yob. I know you wanted the orb saved. I'm so sorry. It is not your fault. There's more, isn't there? It was not supposed to happen this way, no matter what comes. I want you to know you shall always have my respect. Inquisitor, are you alive? Victorious, I see. What a novel result. And it seems the breach is finally closed. Looks that way. What do we do now? We go back to Skyhold. A moment, my lady. 
My agents have found no trace of Solus. He has simply vanished. If he does not wish to be found, there's likely nothing we can do. But I will keep looking. Why would he just leave? Something must be wrong. You said he was upset about the orb. I can't be the only reason. Now that Corypheus has been defeated, we have a moment to stop and celebrate. Afterwards, you will be busy. Every noble in southern Thedas is clamoring to meet you. The fighting's over. Why do they want to meet me now? <laughs> You're joking, yes? They wish to bask in the glory of your victory, hoping that some of it will rub off on them. Everyone knows Empress Selene owes you her life and her throne. A thousand problems remain. And your opinion will be sought on each one, whether you wish to give it or not. I don't see what the fuss is about. Corypheus needed to be stopped. And you are the one who stopped him. Previously, you were an upstart. A mage of all things, leading rebels and heretics. Until Corypheus revealed himself, they could not see the single hand behind the chaos. Once he did, they knew. A Magister and a Darkspawn in one creature, the ultimate evil. Now you are the only power left standing. Enjoy the evening while you can, Inquisitor. Am I imagining it, or do we have a moment to breathe? We have a moment. <laughs> I think you're right. You brought us here. You are proof that the Inquisition made a difference, that we will continue to do so. Our soldiers put their trust in you, Cullen. I appreciate everything you've done. I should be thanking you. You gave me a chance to... to prove myself. In your place, I'm not sure I would have done the same. I should let you mingle. I'm sure everyone desires your attention. As much as I might want it for myself. I've been starting to think about putting all this into a book. I'm thinking, this shit is weird. The Inquisitor Trevelyan story. What do you think? It's a working title. I'm glad you've gone back to writing. Well, nothing certain until it's in print. I still haven't decided if I should do this book. As if anyone will believe this story if I tell it. Not to mention, I'll... Have my hands full with reconstruction and relief efforts in the free marches as soon as I get back. You should write the book. I'll see what I can do once I get home. I'm not leaving for a while yet, though. We'll have to get in at least one game of Wicked Grace before I go. Curly needs to win back some of his dignity. That was the Tevinterest Vint in the history of all Vints. The original mold from which subsequent Vince were cast. And I got to help kick the shit out of him. <laughs> Good times, boss. Good times. There's no one I would have rather had at my side, Bull. Same here. I got to kill another dragon and fight a Vint. Those poor bastards on the ground had demons. It's weird. I joined the Inquisition under orders from the Ben Hathrath and stayed because Corypheus was an asshole. Now that it's done, I've got no orders. For the first time in my life, I can go wherever I want. Got anywhere in mind? If it's all the same with you, I'm pretty good right here. Anyway, the only place I'm going tonight is back for more drinks. To us being alive, and the bad guys not. Ah, Anan. Finally got a party, yeah? A bit of fun for saving the world. It's the least Andraste's Herald deserves for making things normal again. Except for, you know, everything ever again. I mean, is this for us or for her? Or, you know, him? Because I was there and I still don't know what's real. Let the philosophers worry about that. Tonight is for celebrating. Still some things to do yet, right? Because I'm in no hurry to go back to... Val Royale. That's where I was. 
You mind if people still stay around? Or whatever? This is home, if you'll have it. <laughs> Shut at you. I cry, I'm punching everyone. All right, enough of that. Is this a party or what? Raise them for winning. Big freaking heroes, Inquisitor. All of us. I was passing through the hall this morning and a serving girl saw me and squealed. Actually squealed, dropped her laundry and everything. Such a mess. She was completely breathless. You were at the battle with the evil one, weren't you? I didn't even get a chance to answer. She hugged me. Hugged me. This is your influence. That's what happens when you're a hero. Is that so? Must be why it's so unfamiliar. Mind you, I can't say I hate the notion of being the good Devintler. I suppose you can't all be evil bastards. The blacksmith said that, and he spat when we first met. I hope my father hears. He will shit his small clothes from shock, I swear. You're an example of how noble Tevinter could be. For Southerners, maybe. Back home, they'll be rolling their eyes behind their fans. Meanwhile, they'll conveniently forget the bastards who wanted Corypheus ruling us all. I've decided to stay with the Inquisition. For now. <laughs> Would that have anything to do with Iron Bull? <laughs> it might. You know how it is. Plus, what would you do without me? How will I ever know unless you go? Uh, clever. See? I keep your wits sharp. I can't believe it's over. It seemed an impossible task. Defy the Chantry, build the Inquisition from nothing, defeat a creature that would be a god. And yet here we are, celebrating. So we should be. Defeating Corypheus was no simple task. He was so confident of his power, he could not conceive of losing. If he could, he would never have challenged me. And he would have gone into hiding. Yes, it worked out far better this way. I have news from the Sequester. I believe the Chantry intends to name me Divine very soon. It would not have been possible without your support and friendship. It means a great deal to me. And to me. I think back to how we first met. And here you stand. The Chosen of Andraste. Proven in the eyes of all Thedas. And you are my friend. How did that happen, I wonder? I'm pleased it did. You are a great woman, and I will always stand at your side. Ugh, I should never have hired a new caterer so late. Leave it be, Josie. Everything's fine. It is not! I'm so sorry, nothing's quite as it should be. Oh, do you like the drinks? I I'm not sure about them. The drinks are fine. It's been a wonderful evening. I hope you're not just saying that. You're not, are you? I mean, what a disaster. It was my was late, the invitations to our guests barely went out at all, and... and... <sighs> it was so wonderful to prepare for a small banquet instead of the end of the world. Do you know what everyone is talking about tonight, from commoners to kings? Us. Thedas is discussing the success of the Inquisition. You played no small part in our rise to power. <laughs> you had a role yourself, if I recall correctly. Truly, we will never forget those we lost. But for tonight, to victory. Enjoying the refreshments? Josephine sent all the way to the capital for the petty fool. I must remember to thank her for her trouble. <laughs> She's been craving the cakes from Madame Lucien's shop for months. This celebration gave her the perfect excuse. To you, Inquisitor, for all you've done. So much to do, my dear. Elections for Grand Enchanter must be held, and many of the circles lack even interim First Enchanters. It will take time, and it may not be possible to restore the history that was lost, but we will re- But that will wait. Are you enjoying the celebration? Josephine was in a frenzy arranging it. As a matter of fact, I am. And well, you should. It's a miracle we survived this ordeal. Go mingle. The night is still young. So many people died. More still are hurting. They need help. It seems wrong to celebrate. 
but I want to. The part of me that's me needs to, after all this. The servants are drinking. Some of them are drinking while lying down. Do you have any interest in joining them? I don't know. Not now. It makes things more complicated, and I'm not ready. Someday. Maybe. What happens next? Where do we go? For tonight, we remind the world and each other that we're alive. Yes. Because of you. Thank you for letting me stay. You managed to slip away. I thought I might claim more of your attention after all. Is there something on your mind? Everything. Battle's over. There will be a new divide. Yet I don't care about anything other than you being alive. Colin. I don't know what happens after this. Neither do I. It is said that Corypheus woke after his long slumber and found the world gone awry. He fought to bring back those days of magic and shadow, to raise himself as a god and set things right. Now, we are left with a scar in the sky to remind us of what almost was. It tells us that a great victory against Chaos was won, but left the world forever chained. Consider the mighty empire of Orle, where Empress Selene remains on her golden throne. The civil war is ended, but a new war rages in the shadows. Gaspar, it seems, has learned his lesson well. Even the elves have no rest, with Briala's uprising rocking the empire to its core. Fortunately for Selene, her gratitude towards the Inquisition has remained strong. Some claim she clings too tightly to the Alliance. Others know it is all that stands between her and defeat. The Grey Wardens of the South slowly rebuild in the months following the events at Adamant. They declare it time for the Order to emerge from the shadows, to join the rest of humanity in fighting their ancient foes. Rumors abound that they severed ties with their leaders at Weishaupt, and that a bitter war now rages between them. What becomes of Hawk is unknown, save that all news out of Weishaupt soon ends. Does the sudden silence indicate a battle within, or something far worse? One month after the defeat of Corypheus, the Chantry names Cassandra as successor to the Sunburst throne. Given the name Divine Victoria, she immediately enacts reform, a new Templar order, and a new circle of Magi. The Seekers of Truth are rededicated to their purpose of protecting the innocent. A proclamation of support for the Inquisition is issued, recognizing its service to all of Thedas. Despite her popularity, the new Divine's reforms are seen by some as going too far. The Inquisition's mages, the former rebels led by Grand Enchanter Fiona, are left with a choice. In the end, they refuse Cassandra's invitation to rejoin the Circle of Magi and instead reform the College of Enchanters as a new order. The College, they say, will allow Mages of the South to gather in peace and seek new solutions to age-old problems. And some fear it will lead to a new war of the Mages upon themselves. I knew you would come.
You should not have given your orb to Corypheus, Red Wolf. I was too weak to unlock it after my slumber. The failure was mine. I should pay the price. But the people... They need me. I am so sorry. I am sorry as well. 